Three Muncie police officers turned themselves into the FBI this morning. All three were indicted on federal charges of excessive force and for what federal officials described as an attempt to cover it up. Behind your back. Behind your back. Behind your back. Don't get up. Hey. What did I do? Put your hand behind your back. Welcome back to Legal Descent, where we evaluate your constitutional rights before they're taken away. Last week, we took a look at a couple of incidents that occurred within the police department in Muncie, Indiana. We watched as officers mercilessly brutalized a man in the parking lot of a Taco Bell, and we witnessed the illegal use of state resources against the political opponents of a town council member. You can find the link to that video in the card on the screen and also in the description below. Now we will evaluate yet another body cam video that displays the actions of the son of the former chief of police doing what one officer described as a scene out of a war movie. On June 9th, 2018, Officer Chase Hunter was traveling east on Jackson Street when he observed two males on bicycles cross at an intersection without stopping at the stop sign. He observed that they were holding flashlights and their bikes did not have lamps on the front and rear of the bicycles. Yeah, that actually is required by an ordinance in Muncie, Indiana. As the officer was following the bicyclists, he allegedly saw one of the men throw an object into the bushes and then split off from the other cyclists. That's when the officer made contact. 63 from Garcia and Howard. Uh, you gotta have lights on both front and back, okay? I did, I, all, all I knew was right. front. Hey! Come here! Can I try the owner? No. What's your name? Top Mitchell. Get off, your bike. Get off your bike for a second. Right. You got anything on you? No. Nothing on you? No. You gotta have lights on the front and back of your bike, okay? Oh, man. Yeah. I thought it was the front. Nope, front and back. That's what I thought was front. Nope, front and back. What's your name? Jesse. Jesse what? Jesse Brown. Okay. And you said what? Talk to Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Just the bike? Yep. Cause a lot of traffic. Traffic. traffic hazards. Oh. Well, I knew, that's why I'd asked about the lights, but I didn't know. Yeah. Have a seat. Have a seat with him. What's in your back? You got anything on you? Yeah, well, I got just, uh, I got a pocket knife. Right there. You mind if I grab it? Yeah. It ain't open. Where you guys heading? Huh? Where you guys heading? Where's he live? Okay, Have a seat with him, okay? Right. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah. Watch him be through something in the bushes when I came around. Uh -huh.
Okay, I'm up. It's actually there. Put your hands behind your back. At this point, the officers attempt to subdue Vernon, who is actively resisting. The officers are able to use a reasonable amount of force. However, reasonable is the key word. Throughout this arrest, they throw him to the ground, they punch, and they tase him repeatedly. Plus, this is just another example of body cams falling off or not working as intended just when they are needed the most. But this arrest was just the tip of the iceberg with the Muncie Police Department and Winkle especially. Joshua Douglas, Danny Terry, Manny Montero, Lonnie Gammon, and now Jesse Vernon all had lawsuits filed against the police department within the span of just a couple of years. All of these cases involved officers utilizing unreasonable amounts of force, and they each reached an out-of-court settlement. Those settlements racked up a bill of over $1.2 million. The tally of violations and lawsuits began to attract the attention of the FBI and sparked an investigation that led to the indictments of four officers. Chase Winkle, Jeremy Gibson, Corey Posey, and Sergeant Joe Kratia were indicted for their roles in allegedly using excessive force against suspects and allegedly attempting to cover up the misconduct. Kratia left the Muncie Police Department retiring in July of this year, but the other officers are still employed with the department, and one of them is still being paid with your tax dollars. This time around, the tables were turned as the three Muncie police officers walked into the federal courtroom with shackles on their feet, handcuffs and body chains. The three are facing 12 counts of making a false report and deprivation of rights. Only our cameras were rolling as Chase Winkle walked out of federal court with his father, former police chief Joe Winkle. Chase, do you have anything to say about the charges that you're facing? I don't. There is. Joe, do you have anything to say? No, thanks. Muncie police officer Corey Posey is accused of falsifying a report involving suspect Lonnie Gannam. The allegations came out in a 2020 civil suit against the city, as well as an April 2021 federal indictment against Posey. Despite this, Posey continues to collect a paycheck. Corey Posey is a patrolman with Muncie Police. He's been with the department since 2018. His salary, $56,000 a year. A salary he's still collecting, despite facing a federal charge for false reporting. According to the indictment handed down April 13th, the allegations stem from a 2018 incident. The indictment says Posey wrote a report that implied suspect Lonnie Gannam failed to comply with commands. The indictment also says Posey omitted that his colleague, Officer Chase Winkle, struck Gannam's head and neck with his knee and also omitted that Winkle caused Gannam's injuries. Posey is charged with one count of writing a false report and faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Police Chief Nathan Sloan placed Posey on administrative leave with pay the day after the indictment. On Wednesday, April 14th of 2021, a federal grand jury returned a 17 count indictment charging three officers and one sergeant. They were charged for excessive force and attempting to cover up their crimes. The son of former police chief Joe Winkle is charged with five counts of depriving five different arrestees of their rights to be free from excessive force and six counts of writing false reports about his use of force. According to the indictment, Winkle's actions include kicking, punching, 
knee striking, and using a taser on arrestees without justification. Gibson is charged with two counts of depriving two arrestees of their rights to be free from excessive force and one count of writing a false report about that use of force. Gibson's actions include punching, stomping on, and knee striking arrestees without justification. Crescia is charged with two counts of writing false reports related to two of Winkle's excessive force indictments. According to the indictment, Crescia minimized the level of force used by Winkle during one arrest and on another occasion falsely represented that it was a different Muncie Police Department sergeant who cleared Winkle of his use of force. Posey is charged with one count of writing a false report related to one of Winkle's yet again excessive force indictments. The maximum penalty for the deprivation of rights offenses is 10 years of imprisonment per count, and the maximum penalty for the false report offenses is 20 years of imprisonment per count. So for example, Posey is facing up to 20 years in prison, while Winkle, if convicted, could receive up to 130 years for his misconduct. These officers were scheduled to stand trial in just a few weeks on January 24th, which is when I originally planned on covering the story, but it was rescheduled this past month to take place on August 15th, 2022. One officer already pled guilty to concealing a crime committed by Winkle. Posey is still on the payroll while waiting for his trial. Jesse Vernon, the man on the bike who was arrested and beaten, received an undisclosed settlement amount and all of his charges were dropped due to what the prosecuting attorney would state in his motion to dismiss as in the best interest of justice. Although that justice took over a year to come to fruition and the victims of the officers involved are still waiting for their justice four years later. While we are vigorous supporters of your right to be considered innocent until proven guilty, do you believe that it is appropriate for government workers to be receiving benefits and pay while awaiting trial for brutality and false reporting, especially when that money is coming from you, the taxpayer? Let us know in the comments below. Happy New Year, everyone. I wish you all joy in 2022 and I give you the promise that the best is yet to come. Remember that no matter who you are, you have value and you have rights. Do not be afraid to use them and we'll see you next time right here on Legal Descent.